Aloha and welcome to the Hawaii Reopening Consortium webinar. This is the fifth of a series of eight webinars happening every Tuesday. My name is Sandy Santiago Narvez, and I am the Director of Sales and Marketing at the Risk Health and Residences Waikiki Beach. This series is a collaboration between the Travel Industry Management International and the Scheidler College of Business Administration Alumni Association. The idea for this series was born from a simple discussion that evolved into a realization of a need. We needed to hear from our leaders in our various industries. We needed them together, united, and we needed their help in determining our own plans to reopen successfully. But ultimately, this series is about you. So please, if you have any questions for our panelists, go ahead and drop them in our Q&A box. Our moderators will monitor your questions and select as many poss as possible to review at the end of our webinar. Please list the name of the panelist in the Q&A if you want a specific, specific speaker to answer it. These webinars are offered at no cost by the two alumni associations. The webinars are designed to stimulate ideas for solutions. These solutions can be implemented by key tourism leaders, large and small business owners, employees working in the tourism industry, college students studying the travel industry or related fields, and the general public. Topics include tourism health and safety, an update from the airline and hotel industries, and restarting businesses in retail, dining, activities, events, and weddings. The goal of these webinars is to deliver information that can save small businesses, save jobs, and provide hope to our attendees with positive and forward-thinking messages. You can see our previous webinars at vimeo.com slash Scheidler College. Additionally, the Scheidler College of Business recently started a new virtual fundraising campaign called Scheidler Strong. Proceeds raised will help us to provide critical funds for our students and our programs and help us to perpetuate a legacy of excellence for the college. If Scheidler has touched your life or you're receiving value, value from these webinars, we encourage you to give what you can. No gift is too small and it helps us to move forward in creating a bright future for our community. Together, we can help keep Scheidler strong. Now, since these seminars are during the day, we are featuring UH Scheidler College of Business or Travel Industry Management restaurants that are owned and managed by an alumni. Today's restaurant is Dippy's, love my chili. I would also like to mention the producers behind this webinar today, Evan Leong, CEO of Brain Gain Hawaii, and Buddy Leong, Executive Director of Virtual Students Experiences. Let's meet our moderators today. Now you've seen him on every webinar and today he will be one of our moderators. Toby Tamaye, president of AT Marketing. He has been working in the field of marketing to Japanese for over 25 years. Well, Toby, you must have started when you're three or something, yeah? And with us from Japan is Dave Erdman, founder, president, and CEO of Pack Rim Marketing Group and PR Tech, both Vector Group Inc. companies. Dave Erdman has been advising established brands on how to increase their share and spend from the Asia traveler market for more than 40 years. He and his team have pioneered strategies and tools combining multilingual, online, digital, and integrated marketing for this purpose. In 2014, Dave was named the U.S. Small Business Administration Small Business Person of the Year for the state of Hawaii. Wow. Recognized for being an advocate for small businesses and for tra the travel, tourism, and retail industries. His professional affiliations include past chair for PADA and Honolulu Japanese Chamber of Commerce, board and executive committee member, retail merchants of Hawaii for over 20 years. Dave and Toby are two of the most sought after experts in the Japanese travel market for Hawaii, and we are lucky to have them lead the conversation today. As they say in Japan, Gambate. Mahalo, Sandy, your Japanese speaking is great. Hey, Dave, thanks for joining us today. What time is it there? Ohayou gozaimasu. Tokyo kara Dave Erdman desu. Imo wa asa roku jinhan desu. Mo aki ni narimashita, chotto samui desu. Good morning from Tokyo. This is Dave Erdman. It's 6.30 a.m. Toby on a chilly fall morning. I'm really pleased to be with all of you. And thank you, Sandy, for uh, the nice introduction. We're ready to go. Wow, sounds great. I miss traveling and the weather in Japan. And I know many on our webinar attendees miss traveling to Japan too. I know that we cannot travel there now, but it's exciting to know that Hawaii and Japan have created an agreement 
to allow Japanese nationals to travel here. Toby, yes, that's true. Japanese residents can travel, but until there is a solution for an approved test by the state of Hawaii and an approved trusted group of partners in Japan, there is a 14 day quarantine uh, uh, in Hawaii and Japanese residents traveling back to Japan still need to quarantine for 14 days when they return at this stage. Uh, we'll learn more from our speakers today on this situation, an important subject, as well as the upcoming uh, governor's announcement later today, which you'll talk about, Toby. That's correct. I'm sure it's worth it to quarantine in Japan. I mean, who would it? 7-Eleven and losses delivers, right? <laughs> uh, yes, Toby. There have been many changes here this year to make it easier to quarantine at home. You know, when I came here a month ago, I diligently did my quarantine after arrival. Uh, but I was surprised after, after the quarantine and all the border control checks prior to departure and on arrival at Narita, I was actually never traced, tracked, called, emailed, or text. I was surprised. I stayed put, though, because I was afraid that Japan might have those super strict quarantine police <laughs> like we have in Hawaii. It's you know, always better. <laughs> it's always better to side with the cautious and responsible side. I can't tell you how excited we are today with our five speakers. Each of them are experts in industry and we are ready to talk about restoring travel. However, I have news for you and all of our attendees. Governor Ige has called a press conference today that will start at one o'clock to talk about pre-testing situation for Japan tourism restart. So once again, Governor Ige has a press conference right after this at one o'clock. You can catch it on Facebook Live or I'm sure other the the media will be streaming it on their stuff as well. This is the first major press conference since the beginning of the pandemic to address restoring tourism from Japan. So two of our speakers today, Eric Takahata of Hawaii Tours on Japan and Hiroshi Kuroda of Japan Airlines are at the Capitol or the airport right now meeting with the governor and their team. You can catch this press conference again on Facebook Live, but don't you guys worry. They've each sent us some brilliant replacements from their organizations to step in. We will not skip a beat on this discussion at all. So I guess it's officially restoring travel from Japan Day. Does this mean we'll see many Japanese soon, Dave? Well, what an exciting day and lots of good information we're gonna to share today. Thank you, Toby. Well, we'll definitely won't see the 1.5 million arrivals that came in 2019 here, but now for businesses on Oahu and hopefully on the neighbor islands, you will start to see some gradual impact from Japanese visitors soon. From our hotels to retailers to our small businesses, we really need this market to start traveling here again. Agreed. You know, Japan is the second largest tourism market for Hawaii. I don't know if you guys knew, but 127,000 Japanese arrived last November. They contribute 2.25, sorry, $2.25 billion in spending in 2019. The average Japanese spends $242 a day. In fact, our retail industry desperately needs them. Japanese visitors spend three times more on shopping than a US Canadian or European visitor. On an average day last year, 25,500 Japanese were in Hawaii and more than 200,000 came here to get married or have a honeymoon. We desperately want this market to restart day. Today, our speakers will give a useful overview of the current Japanese travel market and where we're headed in the late 2020 and definitely for 2021. Our webinar will feature speakers from airline, tour agency, transportation, and government agencies that will provide you more information on preparing for the restoration of travel from Japan. I'll see you guys later in the seminar. Let's introduce our first speaker. Kimiko Kwan is stepping in for Eric Takahata, the Managing Director of Hawaii Tourism Japan which is the official tourism office in Japan for the Hawaii Tourism Authority. Kimiko is a graduate of Colorado State University and joined Outrigger Hotels and Resorts in sales and marketing, where she helped drive growth of the Japan market. At Hawaii Tours in Japan, in her role as sales and marketing, is to work with Japan and Hawaii travel partners and is responsible for sales and distribution channel marketing and growing travel agency understanding of the Hawaii destination. Thank you for stepping in Kimiko to update us on HTJ's programs and efforts to help Hawaii restart tourism from Japan. Kimiko. 
Aloha, Dave san. Well, thank you, Tavi. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Dave san, for giving me the opportunity for this great um, timing. And, and as Toby was mentioned that the, we gonna have a big news coming up. So it's very much excited. Um, Eric Takahata is regulating that the, he is not able to make the presentation for you guys, but he said best regards and then we do our best to do uh, deliver uh, more on the Japanese services and visitor to state of Hawaii. So let me just start in for the presentation. Um, are you able to see my presentation okay? Okay. Yes, yeah, we, so yes we can see it. We can see it. We can see it. Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, we like to just have you um, understand what's happening in Japan as well as a political situation. Um, oops, sorry about that. And as you know that the um, new prime minister elected, uh, Prime Minister Suga, September 16, uh, apparently Mr. Uh, prime Minister Suga was that the right-hand man for the, the uh, former Prime Minister Abe. So they will continue, he will continue uh, that the policies and procedures and initiative uh, as uh, former Prime Minister Abe was mentioning. And also that the COVID-19, those are the situations still affecting Japan and doing the economic recovery as well. So economy, um, it, it hurts uh, not just the Hawaii, but also Japan and also other global. Uh, our uncertainty surrounding economic outlook is remaining very high. And as well as the economy improvement, uh, it's recovering, but the pace is a little bit slower and or moderate. And also personal consumption uh, remaining stagnant, uh, declining, little close to 11% on the half of first half of the September. So again, the Japan is still struggling the situation, but it's getting better. And also that the lots of uh, government funding, um, as you see that the central bank remaining ready to um, range that the easing of corporate funding and also that the monetary support as needed. So those are happening in Japan. Um, I am sorry that I didn't have a most update information about the Japan COVID case. This is as of October 14. Uh, when you see the population versus um, how many infection. So we did have a little um, diagram as you see the population for Hawaii is 1.4 million uh, versus Tokyo itself is 14 million, which is 10 times more. The COVID case Japan is a little over 90,000 versus Hawaii is um, about 14,000. And as you see on the bottom, the per capita, Japan is really low. Um, it's like a 72 cases per 10,000, 100,000 versus Hawaii is 970. And as you see that the Hawaii is, I'm sorry, the Japan is quite low and they're really remaining have a low infection uh, prevention, social distancing, wearing a mask. Uh, it's a lot of initiative is happening. Also, Japan travel condition has been changing. Um, the government recognized reopening the country is very important, not only for the leisure market, but also business uh, to recover the, the, the economy. So Japan and Singapore and Korea starting a business trip, which is they are gonna allow to the business people going back and forth so that, that they can restart the economy. Also the resident trip, the people who live in both country are able to going back and forth. Uh, those are 10 country is starting. However, the border enforcement, the measurement is still remaining very strict. Uh, unfortunately, because of the infection cases in US is very high. So the Japanese government set Japan, I'm sorry, that the US level three, they have a total level four, but the, right now, Hawaii included, we are the level three. This is a hurdle 
of the, the recovering, I'm sorry, the reopening tourism. Also Japan, domestically, they're really trying to recover the economy. So they just started go to campaign, uh, go to travel, go to eat. It's already implemented. Now there are more gathering events. So they have a go to event campaign will be held. Again, this is more focused on a domestic uh, recovery from the COVID-19. And how about the travel industry forecast? Um, this is assumption and invaluable. So this is not everything I put it or we put it, but uh, the Japanese government really put the funding for the, the employment so that the people are not gonna be losing their job. They are really trying to keep that the economy going. So the government is doing that the corporation to give employment funding, which is continued. And also the domestic travel focus, the go to travel campaign will be continued until January as we know, but uh, they are discussing uh, extension for the next year, 2021. So it's gonna be heavily domestic travel focus continue. Also that because of the COVID-19, a lot of domestic international outbound trouble is, is um, eased uh, or not happening. So a lot of closure and margin of the trouble retail out, outlets is happening. Also airlines suspension and operation is, is also the hurdle for the, the travel industry. However, um, the airline, including a Japan airline, is already starting for the, the couple um, uh, round trip, Japan and Hawaii, starting from August, and then slowly have a residence or any students or any business people are able to go in back and forth to Japan and Hawaii. Well, thank you to um, Japan Airlines, Janison, as well as the other airlines. Also, Hawaii is reopening. There's so many uncertainty until this point. Uh, Hawaii is reopening, extending for the, the 14 days quarantine was happening. So a lot of Japanese travel industry was saying when we don't know when we're gonna be open. So those were the hurdle. So this is our Hawaii forecast uh, based on the top 10 travel company, including today's guest speaker, Mr. Ishida's JTB. Um, we have did a little research, how that the, the forecast, how that the outlook for the, the, this fourth quarter and also beyond. Uh, 2020, we forecasted minus 82%, which is compared to the 2019 visitor numbers. So we are expecting about 300,000 people are um, arriving this year. How about 2021? We're focusing about 630,000. As you see, as actually the, the Toby was mentioned, we have 1.56 million came on 20, 2019. So um, it's not gonna be dramatic recovery, but we are kind of slowly opening, slowly welcoming back the Japanese visitor. The, the diagram quarter one, two, three, four, these are the percentage compared to 2019 visitor numbers. So when you see this number, you sum it, it's not gonna be 100%. We're comparing with the each quarter's visitor number to 2019. However, Japanese um, customer are more open to travel. Um, again, the go to travel campaign is starting end of July. And then I think that the environment is coming easy and the Japanese audience wants to travel now. And this is a number coming from the, the uh, marketing research. Um, as you see the desire, which is a second number um, is increasing compared to the May versus August. And then now it's in the end of October these percentage should be rise. Um, that's what we are expecting. This is just the overall, not just the Hawaii. And at the same time, we did some consumer sentiment for travel to Hawaii. We have a, a little survey 
in August, uh, the, the sample number was close to 34,000 people. As you see, 21% of the people are expressing that, that they like to come back to Hawaii as soon as Hawaii is open. And by next year, June, um, as you see the numbers, the people are saying they definitely want to come back. And first opening, we have a more heavy repeater are uh, interested in coming back. And then slowly more weddings and also that the, the, the people who purpose the first timer might be a little bit hard to acquire uh, because they still have a fear of uh, traveling, not only abroad, but also domestic. But definitely we have to send the right message to do okay to travel, we are safe. Those are the message is very important. And this is a quick glance, the numbers. Uh, again, this was a 2019 number. We have over 10 million. Japan visitor was close to 1.57 people and market share about 15%. But as you see those numbers, this is overall Hawaii. Um, overall, we have a 69% down. Japan is 71% down. So we are expecting earlier previous uh, slide I said, uh, 300,000 is going to be the landing counts number, the visitor number we are expecting for 2020. The market situation has been changed, but yet we have to make sure that the, we provide the information. So we really trying to uh, give our right information to Japanese visitor. So we create the microsite. If you have a friends or family in Japan, please you know introduce this website on the allhawaii.jp, which is our portal site. Uh, we have a special site for the COVID-19 updating a numbers, situation, any information, how to travel with this condition. And we create the, some protocol videos so that the people are able to see. Again, the purpose is we eliminate the fear and also we can promote the, the, the stakeholder here in Hawaii that the, we doing our best to service Japanese visitor. So Japanese tourism reopen. We definitely focus Hawaii Tourism Authority's four pillars, uh, natural resources, Hawaiian cultures, community, and a brand marketing. Those are the four pillars that we're gonna be put a lot of initiative, but again, make sure we take care of our land, our people, so that the, we can take care of the Japanese visitor. So Malama Hawaii campaign will be land out for Japan market too. Again, our mission is a relationship tourism. Japan and Hawaii is such a special relationship we have uh, since Gandemono arrived. So we're gonna continue, or we're gonna be strengthen the relationship so those are that the uh, focus with the, the stakeholders, with the, the officials. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kamiko, for those incredibly useful updates, and we really appreciate having that useful forecast for us. Stepping in for Hiroshi Kuroda is Janice Yasunaga, Director of Passenger Sales, Hawaii Region of Japan Airlines. Janice has been with the airline for 31 years. Previously, she was with the Nippon Golden Network and is an international business grad from the University of Hawaii College of Business. <laughs> Mahalo Janice for stepping in today. I know Kuroda is gonna be actually, Mr. Kuroda is gonna be on the press conference at one o'clock. So once again, uh, Japan Airlines will be featured at the press conference at one o'clock, but Janice, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Aloha. Thank you, Toby. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everyone, for inviting us to join you today. Um, my name is Janice Yasunaga, proud uh, alumni of the UH. It was, it was called Biz Ed back then, but um, proud alumni of the Business College. Um, my boss, Japan Airlines Regional Manager Hiroshi Kuroda, regrets not being able to be with you today. But as Toby mentioned, he'll be at the press con conference shortly, and he sends his best regards to all of you. So today, um, I'd like to briefly talk about the following items. Uh, JAL's efforts towards COVID-19, travel situation in Japan, travel situation in Hawaii, current JAL flight operations, and future outlook. 
But first, please watch this video about our safety and security measures. We here at Japan Airlines have established measures to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. We require our airport staff to wear face masks. Clear partitions have been installed at counters. Hand sanitizing stations have been set up throughout the airport and we regularly disinfect frequently touched surfaces such as our check-in kiosks, tables and chairs. Thermal cameras at security areas and non-contact infrared thermometers are being used to monitor guest temperatures. Guests will also be asked to observe social distancing measures while standing in line. In the cabin, our cabin crew are required to wear face masks and gloves. Hand sanitizers have been placed in the lavatories. While the cabin is thoroughly disinfected every night, including armrests, screens, shared stowage space, lavatories, and other frequently used areas, we ask our passengers for their cooperation in preventing the spread of any viruses. If you experience any symptoms, such as a fever or cough, please refrain from boarding. Please wear a face mask while at the airport and on board. Please observe social distancing while standing in line. In order to provide our customers with a safe and secure travel experience, Japan Airlines and the JAL Group will continue our efforts to prevent the spread of COVID-19 during this time. We thank you for your cooperation and understanding. Okay, thank you for watching the video. Um, so as seen in the video, to prevent spread of COVID-19 worldwide, airlines around the world are implementing safety and security measures. As you saw in the video, we are also implementing these measures from two perspectives, JAL's commitment to our customers and our requests to our customers. The main efforts for prevention are two things, wearing masks and disinfecting. Of course, we ask our staff to wear masks, but we also ask our customers for their cooperation in wearing masks or face guards. The check-in counter, cabin, and lounge have all been thoroughly sanitized, and the air inside the cabin is completely refreshed every three minutes, as you can see in this slide. Now, I'd like to share some pictures to show one of our safety measures during meal services. This shows the temporary changes as to how we serve our meals. These are just examples and maybe different depending on the flight. Uh, both pictures are business class meals. The left one is the Japanese meal and the right one is the Western meal. As you can see for each meal, all plates are wrapped and covered individually to reduce contamination when being served to our customers. Uh, there are not too many changes in economy class meals, which are usually prepackaged or covered in individually. In the future, we are also working on new gel non-contact, non-face-to-face hospitality as a service for those who want to fly more safely and securely without contact. Specifically, we are currently conducting trials such as the one ID boarding process, touchless check-in kiosk, and avatar type remote guidance services at airports in Japan. Next, I'd like to cover the status in, uh, including COVID-19 situation in Japan. Um, Toby and Dave and Kimiko-san have already covered this, so I'll go over it very quickly. Um, and as Kimiko-san just mentioned, the infection uh, situation in Japan is not so high. The seven day moving average in Tokyo for October 22nd was 157.9 persons. So in terms of population ratio, 157.9 persons in Tokyo is equivalent to 15.79 people in Hawaii. And as you know, the travel environment from Japan to overseas or from overseas to Japan still remains restricted. The Japanese government is now gradually resuming traffic to countries with low infection rates, but with a prior priority on business travel. And at present, we haven't seen the outlook for overseas tourism yet. Next is the current trend of tourism in Japan. Uh, the, as Kimiko-san just mentioned, in resuming economic activities in Japan, the government of Japan is implementing a campaign called GoTo Campaign to stimulate various consumer activities. 
The four main pillars are go to travel, go to eat, go to event, go to shopping street. Go to travel is a campaign to stimulate domestic tourism demand as the Japanese government is thinking of increasing the flow of people within Japan. After the Japan domestic market, the Japanese government will consider the flow of people overseas. At the same time, for overseas travel, the government is prioritizing the flow of business and economic activities first. Along with the go-to campaign for domestic demand, the government of Japan is now starting negotiations with countries with low infection rates and initiating a bilateral business and residence track. For further information, uh, you can find more, well, I'm sorry, for, for further information, you can go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs website. Next is the travel environment to Hawaii. As you know, uh, the 14 days of quarantine are currently required for out of state uh, people to enter Hawaii. Hawaii's pre-travel -test, pre test program started on October 15, uh, allowing travelers to be exempt from self-quarantine by submitting a negative uh, PCR test within 72 hours before departure. And as we're all um, anxiously awaiting the official announcement from Governor Ige's press conference, uh, regarding international flights very soon. So, um, but as mentioned, the travel environment in Japan has not been eased. Therefore, we find it difficult to increase the number of Japanese tourists to Hawaii immediately and dramatically. We hope that the relaxation of travel re restrictions to Hawaii will be a step towards resuming tourism and that traffic between Hawaii and Japan will gradually increase. Under such circumstances, Regarding our flight status, Japan Airlines regular flights have been suspended since April. However, we have set up extra flights to provide travel and transportation needs to meet the minimum economic activities for daily life, such as social infrastructure in particular, for those who need to move to Hawaii for business, study abroad, or live in Hawaii, or those who need to return to Japan temporarily, as well as demand for freight and mail. In August, we resumed four round trip extra flights. And in September, October, and November, we continued to operate two extra round trip flights each. For flights after December, we're planning to announce it in early November in consideration of infection status in Japan and Hawaii, travel restrictions, and trends in demand for Japan and Hawaii markets. In the future, we'd like to resume regular flights, including the Hawaii Island Kona route, at some point in order to resume full-scale tourism. However, in order to resume tourism, it is important to develop and prepare a protocol to accept tourists. If such an environment can be prepared, Hawaii, Hawaii residents can welcome tourists, including those from Japan, with peace of mind, and tourists can enjoy their stay in Hawaii with peace of mind also. Japan Airlines has been in service in Hawaii for 66 years. We have brought many customers to Hawaii and have endeavored to help the Hawaii tourism industry as much as possible. In thinking of a new and better way of tourism, the so-called new normal, we'd like to continue to contribute to making tourism safe for both Hawaii residents and tourists alike. I'd like to ask um, all of you for your continued support of Japan Airlines and concludes my presentation today. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Domo arigato Janice-san. Itsumo Jana-san ni iroiro arigato gozaimasu. Janice, thank you for stepping in for uh, your boss, Kuroda-san. And I, we thank you always uh, to you and all your team at Japan Airlines for all that you do for Hawaii for your 66 years of service. And I also thank you personally for, my, uh, uh, for your help for my business and personal travel back and forth to Japan. Thank you very much. Thank you very Next, much. Thank you. Next up is uh, Tsuneo Ishida also known to many as Tony. Ishida-san is president of JTB Travel LLC, the largest travel agency in Hawaii. Ishida-san has nearly 34 years of experience working for JTB. Prior to taking over the Hawaii office, Ishida-san was the operating officer and general manager of the JTB Western Japan branch headquartered in Osaka. I have always been impressed with JTB's innovative and creative programs to encourage Japanese travelers to experience and visit all the islands in Hawaii. Ishida-san, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Welcome to the panel dis discussion, Ishida-san. Thank you. Aloha, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me in this webinar uh, today. 
Toby, Sandy, and UH. I look forward to joining this opportunity. I'm so excited to share our situation with you. Thank you. Uh, today, I would like to share about the five parts, such as our future scenario, safety measures, upcoming marketing concepts, digitalization, and personalization. Uh, but I'm sorry, uh, I don't uh, prepare, prepare a movie and PowerPoint, just my talking. Now let's get started. Firstly, uh, sharing Japanese market trend and our future scenario. Imagine four step scenario to resume in the earnest. First of all, it's Japan in October. I saw when I said this man's like Dave. All of the Japanese people had been wearing masks, but uh, they are, sp are spending a normal life while taking care of hygiene. To my great delight, JTB retail shops were crowded to reserve go to travel campaign. Moreover, to my most delight, only Hawaii brochures were displayed in that shop among overseas travel. It was only Hawaii brochure. Why they displayed only Hawaii brochure? That's because, you know, ATJ announced pretest program from on October 15th. Today, uh, we will get the new information. Therefore, I heard customers came to pick Hawaii brochure up at the retail shop at soon with expectation. So JTB staff members believe Hawaii is a first resumption destination worldwide. Thank you very much for uh, Kimiko-san, ATJ, as a first step. To tell the truth, our group organization is supporting this pretest program. That is Japan Medical Health and Research Institute. They include JTB Medical and Health Tourism Center. I would be happy that our initiatives for a long time for medical tourism in Japan contributes to Hawaii state and this pre-test program. Also, uh, we are planning to the monitor tour in next month by HTJ. Only travel agency and relevant organization to check safety, security, and hygiene. So they look at the current situation and check the safety measures on all of facilities in Hawaii. And then I hope I would like them to consider resumption of tourism under this danger information if it's possible. I imagine that this is second step for tourism industry. Thank you very much, Kimiko-san, HTJ. Additionally, uh, we would like to launch to sell FIT hotel from December. Second is our next scenario. Generally, Japan began to infect full from November. Peak season is December to February. Uh, therefore, Japan government is preparing to prevent double infection, corona and flu. Therefore, I feel it may be difficult to be down danger information to level one until February. But I heard since Japanese take measures against coronavirus. Currently, it seems that the number of flu outbreaks is lower than usual. I expect 
as a sign to be our good opportunity. Mm, so unfortunately, Honolulu Marathon canceled, but I have expectation that Honolulu Festival will hold as a symbol of the construction. And we want to see Nagaoka fireworks again, right? That is our third scenario as our intention. I imagine next turning point will be next March. To be honest, I suppose to continue pretest program between Hawaii State and Japan until next September. That because Japan need to be successful Tokyo Olympic in next summer. Therefore, what we expand pretest program is very important to increase tourists to Hawaii, I think, even if it costs expensive. However, if vaccines become widespread, PCR testing may change another method at a lower cost. I would like to believe that these conditions will improve more and more. Finally, after Olympic around next October, I want to believe to resume tourism as a normal condition falling down under level one. I think this is our four step scenario. Secondly, our safety measures. Uh, we JTB Hawaii Travel obtained WTTC safety stamp, which is World Travel and Tourism Council. Therefore, I would like to share about our five kinds of basic measures. First, it is to wear face mask. Definitely. We staff members, Japanese customers, vendors, and suppliers as well. Second, it is to keep social distance. Do you know Japanese culture? Most Japanese people don't shake hands, hand, and air kiss. You know, Japanese culture, we do just ojigi with smile. In other words, just bow. Third, it is to prepare sanitizer everywhere. When they enter Oriori Alamona Station, Oriori Prada, and Ryan Bath, Japanese tourists need to sterilize a hand by sanitizer. Fourth, it is to confirm temperature. This is same as sanitizer. Fifth, it is to ventilate. When I stayed in Japan this month, I went to dentist. It was so cold, but they had opened windows and entrance. Likewise, we open windows and entrance. Thirdly, it's our upcoming marketing concepts. We have set three marketing concepts. This is usually confidential, but I especially share in this seminar. First is digitalization. Second is personalization. Third is agile. As you know, I anticipate all the people will be late until developing a vaccine and a new medicine and a new medication. On the other hand, I guess, as for this native generation, young people and the people having IT literacy will be recovered sooner. Moreover, they will seek digitalization services to tourism industry. Firstly, it's our digitalization from 2021 April. Therefore, I think we need to shift digital services 
and the personalization of packet tour. Currently, uh, we had organized seven less projects in JTB Hawaii Travel, and we are preparing digital services. Also, when considering digitalization, seven less is a starting point. What do you think seven less is? First is placeless. Second is timeless. Third is humanless. This means that human services shift to essential mission. This doesn't mean cut our staff members. Fourth is paperless. Moreover, we expand digital promotion through such as SNS and on web. Already we built a digital solution department. They are proceeding to make future business. Fifth point is telephoneless. Don't touch telephone. Sixth point is cashless. Don't touch bill. Finally, seventh point is excessive serviceless. Digitalization costs a lot. Therefore, it is necessary to reduce excessive costs. Fifthly, it is about personalization. We will be ready for private tour, small group tour, according to our segments. Moreover, we are going to always take action agile. Lastly, I would like to share our message with you. I always say to my staff members, now it's great opportunity to be given by coronavirus. Now is a chance to change the past. Now is timing for our innovation. Also, I would hope if you could have great prospects to tourism industry for Japanese markets, we are going to grow with Hawaii and local communities together. Finally, thank you very much for having me. Let's overcome this crisis together in the spirits of Aloha. Mahalo. All right, thank you Ishida-san for explaining JTB's next step for Hawaii. I'm looking forward to seeing your colorful buses around town again. Hey, next is our panel discussion. I would like to provide the bios of our additional speakers today. Maki Kuroda from Ino Corporation and Waikiki Trolley and Steve Sombrero from the Japan America Society of Hawaii. Maki Kuroda is the CEO and president of Inoa Corporation, also known as the Waikiki Trolley. She has been with the company for 24 years. In addition to the trolley, her customers consist of diverse sectors such as education, nonprofits, uh, private charters, and travel agencies from various global markets. Maki started her career with Sony in New Jersey in R&D and also worked in the hospitality business in New Jersey for Marriott in sales and marketing. She holds a bachelor of business and marketing degree, as well as an MBA from Troy University. Maki has taught at various schools in an adjunct instructor capacity, including our own HPU, and is on the board of directors of the Waikiki Transportation Management Association. Thank you for joining us, Maki-san. Good morning. Our other speaker is Steve Sombrero. Steve is the president and principal owner of Cushman and Wakefield Cheney Brooks. Throughout his career, he has worked as an international business and real estate advisor to many Fortune 500 companies and Asia-based conglomerates. He has worked on a variety of assignments throughout Hawaii, the Pacific, Asia, Pacific and Asian markets, ranging from master plan communities, multi-tenant residential projects, neighborhood, regional and mega shopping centers, commercial office buildings, and resort hotels. Mr. Sombrero serves on many nonprofit organizations that promote social welfare and educational programs and played a key role in facilitating the Pope Francis Japan visit of November 2019. 
He is currently the chairman of the board for the Japan America side of Hawaii. Steve is a founder and principal owner of the Aloha Beer Company, Hawaii's Beer. And Steve also reserved his executive MBA from the Shiloh College of Business. Thank you for joining us today, Steve, and let's get our panel discussion going. Today, our panel will be broken down into five topics. Topic one, travel anxiety, testing, and quarantine. Topic two, travel seasonality and forecast. Topic three, visitor demographics. Topic four, innovation in COVID packaging and travel concepts. And hopefully we'll get to topic five, marketing and communications. Sounds good. Hey, before we get to our topics, I have a few questions for you, Steve. Welcome to the panel. My first question is, how has your role as the chair of the Japan America Society of Hawaii allowed you to be an advocate for Japanese travelers and programs to help us reopen tourism? Aloha, Toby. Aloha, Dave. Uh, first of all, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to speak uh, today in today's Hawaii Reopening Consortium webinar, which happens to be the day when our governor will announce the opening of Japan. This is a very, very exciting day, uh, but we all still got to figure out how we're going to reopen. There's a lot of work ahead of us, so we need input from, from all aspects of, of the industry. For our viewers who don't know who is JAS, the Japan America Society of Hawaii, we were established 44 years ago by our founders who had the foresight to create bridges of understanding and friendship between Hawaii and Japan for the thousands of visitors and businesses that were entering Hawaii. We do this through exchange programs between our schools from kindergarten all the way to college and facilitating events that bring business and government leaders together to fulfill our mission. And throughout our 44 years, JASH has always stepped up during critical times of need, such as the Ehime Maru accident in 2001, when the US submarine USS Greenville collided with the Ehime Maru, a Japanese fishery high school training ship, resulting in the tragic death of nine students teachers and crew members. JASH is today still called upon to assist in mediating between the grieving families. Uh, we manage the Ahime Maru Memorial Association and the maintenance and care of the uh, uh, memorial in Kakako Park. And in 2011, in the aftermath of the great Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, JASH led the fundraising campaign to raise more than $4 million from donors in Hawaii and throughout the nation towards Japan's recovery efforts in the devastated areas of Fukushima and Sendai. Now, 2020 has been a very challenging year for JASH. We had to stop all of our educational exchange programs, including our much anticipated Hokkaido winter camp in March when we were getting ready to uh, send 10 students from public and private high schools from Hawaii to spend a week in Hokkaido to learn to ski and for some of these kids, it was the first time to see snow. So it was really uh, uh, disappointing to say the least. And right about that time, I still remember when Bob Harrison of First One Bank, who is also on our board, approached our board and said, COVID-19 has just changed the world in a very big way. What does the new jazz look like going forward? That caused me and my board to really think hard about our organization and what we needed to do. Our members numbering uh, between seven to 800 individual and corporate members are all involved in one shape or form with our visitor industry, particularly with the Japan industry, the Japan visitor industry. Members come from airlines, hotels, tour and transportation companies, restaurants, and even a brewery like Aloha Beer. So the crisis was now impacting our own members. For this reason, it was crucial that gas became an advocate for reopening Hawaii to Japan and giving our members a voice in our government and our community about the importance of staying connected with Japan and preparing for the reopening, which is about to happen. And so, I'm, like I said, we're really excited. We provided webinars in Japanese to inform all of our members uh, here in Hawaii and Japan about the pandemic, the government travel mandates, and also the CARES Act money that were being made available through the PPP. Bottom line, we needed to become a resource for everyone, for encouragement and information for all of our members. So back in March, we formed a special committee within JASH and called it the Japan Hawaii Economic Recovery Operation or J-HERO 
And the purpose of the committee was to bring together our members and our organization to formulate a Japan travel bubble concept, complete with protocols and guidelines for reopening with Japan, assembling our travel partners from within and outside our organization to work with government. And also we even went as far as developing a contact tracing app, which we call the Dokoka. And as you know, in Japanese, Dokoka means, where are you? So we're ready to deploy. And, and so we're really excited. And I, I really hope that our program, Dokoka, will be looked at very carefully by our government and, and employed because it is a very simple app downloaded on your uh, smartphone so that when the visitors hit our shores, we can follow them and encourage them to go to the uh, businesses that, are, that have followed our protocols and while they're doing it, earn points towards uh, vacation travel and so forth. So, um, so we have to re-pivot, reposition and reimagine the purpose of JASH. And right now we're doing this to help our members. Oh, thanks for that great explanation, Steve. I have a really quick question because I know that you're a business owner in the real estate commercial industry. What impacts and challenges and opportunities have your organization faced with COVID over the last seven months? Well, uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, I, am, I wear many hats. I guess that's why my name is Sombrero. <laughs> I wear the hat of, uh, of the chair of the Japan American Society, and I also wear the hat of running uh, one of the oldest uh, commercial real estate companies in Hawaii. We were called Cushman & Wakefield Cheney Brooks. So we um, manage uh, over 5 million square feet of real estate between Hawaii and Guam. And I will say that bar none, all of our tenants are struggling. Many, especially in Waikiki, as you know, you just drive through Waikiki today, it's almost like a ghost town. It's really sad. So we have been trying to help our tenants to survive. We're encouraging them to hang on, you know, and uh, it's very easy to give up, but we we're encouraging everybody to hang on. We're partnering with our tenants and doing everything we can to help them with rent deferrals, rent abatements if necessary, and directing them to resources available to them to survive. And um, we're also, um, as I said, doing webinars to, to, to give them ideas on how to reposition their own businesses. And for us, um, we're very fortunate. We're, we're an essential business. We manage properties. And um, although our brokerage uh, transactions have really dropped considerably, especially leasing, uh, we do have a lot of interest from investors trying to position themselves now for the recovery. Because when we do recover, it will be a V-shaped recovery and property prices will go back up again. And so I'm really excited about the future. Well, thank you, Steve San, for sharing those insights. You didn't say anything about beer, but we all look, we are all looking forward to uh, visiting you at Aloha Beer. Thank you. I, I have a few questions for Maki-san. Maki, um, it's been a long seven months, and I know during this time period, you've been planning now for the reopening of travel uh, for all markets, but especially for the Japan market, which has dominated your market share. share. Uh, can you give us some uh, concepts or ideas or specifics on um, uh, your rollout for um, reopening? And if you could touch on any of the capacity issues that are, are restrictions, uh, related to your fleet uh, when we're in tier two at, at this stage. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Dave, for the email. Thanks, Maki. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, yep. good. Okay, again, aloha everyone, and thank you so much for allowing me to speak today. I am immensely honored. Wow, thanks, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, um, let's talk about planning. You know, the thing is that we never really stop. It's all started in March. We kept it about 30 staff. Um, and the first thing we did was that all the manager to take um, that uh, Joan Hopkins University course, it's about COVID um, contact tracing um, program. And then they were able to obtain certificate. I wanna make sure that they understand about this terrible disease called COVID and if in fact, if somebody does get infected by COVID, we all know what to do. So we did that. And thereafter, we uh, basically started working on our trolleys or vehicles, I should say. 
inside and outside. Make sure that gut is okay. And outside we're painting and putting some cosmetic and try to make it pretty. So we'll be all ready. And then other things too, um, we, uh, we have a diesel vehicle. That means we have to start at least once a week. Since the diesel engine is like me, right? In other words, um, if they don't use it or move it, it's hard to get up and get going. I'm old. So uh, basically what we did was that, uh, you know, we start up once a week and did a little exercise, move around a little bit around the base yard and so on. So we'll be all ready to go. And like, again, you know, we want to make sure that our engine is, is going, going here. And then our uh, staff does a daily wellness check, uh, daily one. And another one too, what do we do? Oh yeah, we create a training video. And um, we, yeah, we thought about, you know, just like what Mr. Ishida said, this is like a silver lining for us, right? So we really reevaluate who we are. And we did a lot of soul searching and we came out with a new core value mission and vision statement and so on. Now you mentioned something about dominating Japanese, uh, dominating Japan market, something rather. But um, you know, about 40 years ago, that Japanese tourist behavior at night like today, right? So Trotty came into Hawaii, I think it's right time because they're just starting to venture out. They start feeling comfortable in Hawaii and they want to feel more free, freedom, freedom, freedom. So I, I guess, um, you know, for, for us, we're just lucky. And um, Japanese travel agencies, and such as Mr. Ishida is here, um, and Kimiko-san and you know, Janice and everybody else did such a great job with the marketing where um, you know, Japanese people came. So I think, you know, when I said that um, dominated, uh, it's not probably the right word, but yes, our market share uh, for Japanese market has increased tremendously because of uh, all of you, thank you. Another one you mentioned about the capacity. Okay. Oh, 50%. Ah, we're handcuffed by uh, policy. So it's not much um, we can do there. You know, so we are very um, uh, pay attention to the amount of passenger uh, we'll be riding our trolley. And right now, um, our capacity for sitting down is about 33, including standees about 45. So I would say we would allow anywhere between 16 to about 22 people, but that's it. That's all we can do. Any, wow. Do I forget anything else to answer your question, Dave? You asked me a bunch of them, you know, I'm not the smartest cookie here. So I'll get it. <laughs> Maki, thank you so much. Um, I, you, you told me that you have, uh, to my surprise, almost a hundred vehicles, 65 of which are trolleys. And yes. can you tell me about the trolleys? Most are open air, is that correct? Yes, it's only fewer enclosed, but yes, majority of are on open air. And right now, right now, right now, we're probably using um, about 3%, meaning that we are going to have soft opening. So I really shouldn't say right now, starting next week, on November 2nd, we'll have a soft opening, which we'll be using the one or two trolleys at most. So, you know, we are, we are starting slow, but but starting January, we hope to use about 10% of the, our entire fleet. But still, we are, we're talking about oh, 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 tiny. That's it. Well, you have some announcements coming up. You mentioned November and December. You're starting the pink line up again. And I understand that's your most popular line. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Pink line is, is quite popular. And uh, yes, we are planning to start on a, in a December. But of course, like anything else, we have to make sure that uh, how many uh, stores will be open to the, our partner retail places and so on. So we will have to be uh, very careful and mindful about how much pink line we are going to offer and how often and all this other good stuff. You know, I, I'm just like I'm praying for that visitor to come back. So we can have a bunch of pink lines running around again. I'm gonna turn it over to Toby in a minute, but one clarification. Can you explain what the pink line is for those who are not familiar with it? Well, pink line is basically, it's, uh, it's, it's almost like a Waikiki circulator, 
uh, it goes around Waikiki and to Alamana Shopping Center and back. And that's all we do, back and forth and back and forth. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Uh, Maki, let me turn it over to Toby. Hey, thank you, Maki, for that. Welcome. Hey, so we're going to go through our panel questions. Um, if you guys can limit it to a minute or less, we appreciate it. So let's get all you guys' cameras on and let's start going. All right. My first question is for Kamiko. What do you see or understand from your research are the number one biggest fears or anxiety for Japanese traveling now? I think that the condition is very similar here. The spread of COVID is really affecting our lifestyle. Um, and also the Japan is heading to the, the winter time, which is more virus spread is, could be happening. And the news coming from other destinations, especially in Europe, that the, their second or third wave is hitting right now. So because of those news, and then Japanese are very cautious about how to prevent, uh, those are the, the definite has a fear. Another, I don't want to say this is a fear, but another hurdle is uh, Japanese government, um, the risk, the, again, the US is level three, and a lot of many country coming back that the residents, Japanese residents coming back from the, the international trip, they have to do a 14 days quarantine. Um, that's also the hurdle. But uh, again, you know, our job, I think our industry job is informing Japanese visitor, potential visitor, that Hawaii really trying the industry unite and in providing the services safe place so that the, we can welcome back to Japanese visitor. I hope I am um, explain your- That is perfect, perfect explanation. Exactly what I think would happen. Hey, we was talking about that 40 day quarantine. And so um, we, we have to make it clear, the 72 hour test is great for Japanese coming here, but they have to 14 day quarantine when they go back to Japan. Maki, this question is for you. How do you think, do you think Japanese are still gonna to come to Hawaii even though they have to 14 day quarantine when they come oh, back no, to no, Japan? No, no, no. no, without me speaking, no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you wanna go places and be stuck in one place for 14 days. So no, unfortunately, I don't, I don't really think so. So we have to get that settled up and uh, make sure that uh, we let our government officials know that we wanna open up back on that side. Thank you Absolutely. for that. Absolutely, we need more sites that where the Japanese people can test. <laughs> um, that's for sure. Well, I think the one o'clock press conference is going to find a lot about what's going on with the pre-testing. Right. Okay, my next question is for Janice. Uh, you know, we've uh, from us from the domestic side, we've known about United, Hawaiian, and Alaska having uh, testing in place. Uh, does Japan Airlines have any plans for uh, testing? And also, is there international uh, airport test? Uh, is there airport testing for international departure from Japan? So um, I, I think based on the press conference, um, so right now, as of this moment, we don't know um, the Japanese medical institutions are not included as approved or the trusted partner. So I think once we get that, um, that announced, um, then we can work on creating an environment where we can, um, re with a uh, we can start a testing program and then you know make it more convenient for passengers to come to Hawaii. So based on the specific announcements from the state, I think we can consider such a testing service for our customers. Um, as far as the airport, um, I believe there is a organization called TCOT Testing Center for Overseas Travel. And that was just established under the leadership of the Japanese government. And they have compiled a list of medical institutions that can issue the negative PCR test documents required for business travel um, and introduce them to the customer. And this includes medical institutions at Narita and Haneda airports. And in, in addition, the Narita Airport Authority recently announced that it will officially start operations of the PCR center in cooperation with medical institutions. So I think these are step forward. And based on today's announcement, I think we'll get more clarity. Great, thank you, Janice. So everyone stay tuned for the one o'clock press announcement. I have a yes. question, uh, or our next topic is travel seasonality and forecast. Uh, Kimiko, you gave us some good updates on forecast, but let's be specific at the, for the end of the year or Japanese Oshogatsu or the New Year's holiday. 
do you think we'll see travelers for the New Year's holiday here in Hawaii from Japan? It really depends on how um, airline operation too. Um, we cannot invite Japanese visitors, oh, you just come with the canoes, uh, it takes too long. So it really depends on how that the airlines are um, open or uh, adding more flights into those period. Um, definitely it's not gonna be in the past Oshogatsu period. Um, again, the Japanese are very cautious about the COVID situation globally. And again, just to continue we have to send the messages, accurate information, reliable information, um, not just for Hawaii tourism Japan, but also the entire industry uh, by using a, um, Japanese media. I think that's very important. Terrific, thank you, Kimiko. Janice, you answered this question, but I just if you could touch one more time on it. Uh, are there plans for Japan Airlines to resume service to Kona? And I believe you said you're hopeful that you will. Is that correct? Yes. And in addition to our Honolulu flights, because we've actually suspended all uh, scheduled flights and operating extra right. sections. So we would like to um, get our regular scheduled Honolulu and Kona flights um, reopened as soon as possible. Of course, we don't know the specific time frame, but uh, keeping our fingers crossed. Terrific. Thank you. I'm going to turn it back to Toby now. Yeah, we're keeping our fingers crossed here as well. Hey. We have some optimistic forecasts. There's a future for us, and that's exciting. And again, we got to stress it out. There's a one o'clock press conference coming up in about 20 minutes. So we're going to end on time so you guys can all make it there. Let's go to topic three, visitor demographics. This question is for Kimiko. Uh, what will be the changes in travel intent from repeaters and first timers? Travel intent for repeaters, maybe. Well, it's a great thing is we do have a very high repeater who really want to come back, who miss Hawaii, who miss us so much. And I know Steve Sound was mentioned that the, you know, um, their organization is doing for the bridge in between. I think we are doing a bridge between Hawaii and Japan. Uh, again, it's a collaborative effort to uh, welcome back. And um, there is no exact formula uh, how we can bring, but again, slowly we can welcome back the repeater and they're the one always have a friends and family to spread the word, say, hey, Hawaii is the still best place to be. So that's, I think we need to focus on. Then eventually the first time I will be follow. But the repeat customer is a very important for us at this time of the COVID situation. Awesome, awesome, thank you. And we're talking about repeat market, but let's talk about what segment of travelers do we see returning first? Maki, do you have any idea on who we're going to see first coming to Hawaii? Well, Market you know, segments. Yeah, like, like as you know, I will make it quick. But it's obviously, we just heard announcement uh, about the, no, not one o'clock, but the previous city of a businessman. So business travel will come back first, definitely. And then thereafter, I would say at about 50 plus, um, exactly what Kimiko-san said, that about those people are so familiar with Hawaii that I think, you know, they'll feel a little bit safer than 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 other people will feel. So they'll be back. And thereafter, I think they're probably family with um, with the kids. But you know, it's, it's a little bit tough because like toddlers, they like to lick things. So parents are very, very concerned about, you know, licking all this not clean surface or not. So, um, but there's a family. And then thereafter, probably a senior citizen in the group, meaning that uh, it's gonna be very difficult for group people to come back unless we have a, the firm safety protocol and maybe even vaccine. Right. Uh, yeah. Hey, Steve, based on your um, feedback, do you guys know what's, who's gonna also be coming here in the beginning? Well, as far as I know, uh, business travel will probably be first and foremost, and then students. As you know, many uh, Japanese own condos and businesses and restaurants. So many of these owners need to come back to Hawaii and check things out, right? Make sure that there's one, somebody else not living in their condos. But uh, <laughs> so that's the first wave. And hopefully then we have the Shugaku Yoko, the students that will come back here. And if uh, uh, the statistics is correct, then the young people have a, a, have a higher chance of, of making it through the coronavirus. And so perhaps we can see students come back here, but the the older population will probably come in the, the end. 
but I, I think I, that's what's going to happen. I definitely agree with you. And we're also seeing the same um, type of uh, trends coming for the domestic market. We're seeing a lot of younger and a lot of uh, families actually coming in from the domestic market. Um, speaking of families, hey, Janice, um, this question is for you. Do you see this family market recovering for Japan? And are they currently traveling domestically by air? So yes, to answer your question, um, we went over the go-to travel program uh, promotion in Japan uh, geared for the domestic market. And that's doing really, really well. And it's um, I get the demand for tourism for domestic sightseeing destinations are gradually recovering. And one thing about the COVID is, um, you know, families were refrained from going out. And during that time, family bonds were renewed. So I think we expect like family travel, especially like three generations of families to uh, steadily grow again. Very good. Thank you for that quick answer on that. Uh, this question is for Ishida-san. Uh, what do you think Japanese miss most about not coming to Hawaii in 2020? Okay, thank you for asking me. Uh, that's a good question. I imagine three points. What I imagine at this moment, uh, the first is wedding and honeymoon. We have lost a lot of wedding and honeymoon customer in this year. So especially they did not hold the wedding in Hawaii. Mm. Or most popular place for Japanese. Absolutely, they are waiting to resume travel to Hawaii. The second is incentive tours. Uh, reward trips in corporate demand and school trips, uh, and exchange program. Hawaii is a special destination for Japanese people. Just imagine we are excited. Therefore, I am able to imagine they are disappointed. I'm worried about their business and motivation. Finally, the third is the vitamin of their heart. Uh, repeat travel account for 70% in Hawaii. Hawaii is a part of living or life for them. I feel for healthy people, it is more worry than coronavirus. That's all, homie. Oh, thank you so much for that. And uh, Dave, he's gonna take us to our next topic. I love that answer. Thank you very much. That was great. Um, I'm going to have a general question. It's all sort of the same here. Is any thoughts for new travel concepts for the Japanese market? Um, Steve, Maki, and Ishida-san, this is for you. I'll start with Steve. And do you have any thoughts for any new travel concepts that we'll see from Japan? Yeah. Um, you know, the thing is, the reopening of Hawaii, we need to look at it from the perspective of both Hawaii and Japan. For Hawaii, we need the Japan travelers to come back. For Japan, Hawaii travel is a, is a want, it's not a need. So we need to convince them why they would want to get on a plane for eight hours and come to Hawaii when there are other options, especially since we're part of the United States of America, which is now considered the most dangerous place to go in the whole planet, right? So we need to figure this out. We need to find a way to increase their want to come to Hawaii. and so. Um, I, I think the, the uh, uh, ideas that have already been discussed, uh, the culture of Hawaii, the roots of Hawaii with Japan are 100, that goes back 150 years. These are all things that will appeal to the Japanese. And I think also we need to convince them also that it is safe to be here uh, while they're here. You know, you've got to understand that the, the Japan people have been raised and have been grown in a community that practices social distancing the day they were born. As uh, Ishida-san said, you bow, you don't shake hands, you don't hug, uh, you cover your mouth when you laugh, <laughs> you don't make eye contact when you talk to people, so this Zoom thing is a good thing. Uh, when you go to uh, a restaurant, you get an oshibori right before you eat, so there's cleanliness being encouraged. Waitresses don't really talk to you much, so they're not spitting on your food, another thing. And uh, taxi drivers, they're wearing gloves. And when you get in a taxi, the door opens automatically for you. So you don't have to touch the uh, handles, right? And what is the restroom called in Japan? It's called the otearai, which means to wash your hands. So if you think from those terms, 
Japan is a, coming from a very high standard of cleanliness and sanitation. We've got to at least match that here in Hawaii and show Japan that Hawaii is ready. It is safe to come here. And then once you convince them of that, then they will come here and do all the other things that tourists do here. But trying to get them to spend time in Hawaii with U.S. travelers that have just come back that are refusing to wear masks while they walk around Waikiki, that's going to be the challenge. Well, thank you for that insight, Steve. Maki, do you see any, let's talk about packages, any new types of packages that might impact positively or even negatively to your organization? Well, I think it's, um, first of all, I think Mr. Ishida probably knows more than anybody else. Uh, he's the gentleman who's creating the various packages here. But for us, though, I try to focus on this. Of course, we have open air vehicles. So a lot of tours now will be conducted using a trolley. And you know, in terms of Japanese people, I guess uh, it's like almost like a mainland counterpart. We have to have a bubble concept. And as well as I'm sure they would like to do a lot of outdoor activities in more with the nature. And, and I think, you know, it's one of the things that I just wanna quickly, I have probably like less than one minute. I would like to share with you is this here, this, this great survey was conducted by that, um, this company called Recruit Lifestyle. And according to this, what they, um, it's awesome the fact that why Japanese people come to Hawaii, well, first of all, Hawaii was the number one destination um, from Japan, awesome. And what they like to do is number one, they would like to relax and they would like to eat a great food. So what I think is though, relax is something of course, we are blessed with such a beautiful beach, right? So they can go to the beach and relax or not, but then when it comes to the food, once again though, it's, it's they are interested. So our package uh, will consist of food, but I think we really need to emphasize about safe dining, um, outdoor experience, uh, window down and so on. So we, any package that we think we will create now on is that um, well, until COVID-19 is settled or gone, hopefully soon, that we have to have the safety element um, definitely attached to any package that we're gonna be creating in the future. Thank you, that's terrific. Good insight. Ishida-san, uh, small private tours, smaller groups, family only programs. Do you think you'll be having those type of creative packages? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we are creating a new private tour in Hawaii to avoid the contact with another person. Uh, this is a current need for most Japanese travelers. So therefore, we are planning to wide range of choices from individual, family, to small groups in packet tour from next April. Concretely, we are going to offer choices after arrival at airport or on during a stay for each unit. Yes, uh, we are preparing. Terrific. Thank you, Ishida-san. Yes. Toby, I'm going to turn it over to you and you'll have to look through. Our time is running short here and what you want to focus on for our last few minutes together. Absolutely, Dave. Uh, we're going to move into a little bit more uh, questions. Uh, this question is actually for Janice and this is actually a very interesting question. You know, Zip Air is a subsidiary of Japan Airlines and they announced intentions to fly to Hawaii. Is this still scheduled to begin? Yeah, so while um, it is, Zipair is our subsidiary company, they're an independent, independent company and their management de determines their schedule. So we actually don't have any details, but as reported in the news, they are preparing to start operations during the winter schedule. So that's the next couple of months, I think. Um, yeah, so when resuming tourism from Japan, I believe, believe it's good for customers to have more airline options and hope Zip Air will contribute to Hawaii's tourism industry. Thank you so much for that. Uh, this question is for Kamiko. Uh, do you see uh, Hawaii destination areas like islands, such as Lanai, Kauai, Koalina, more, uh, more separated areas in popularity for the Japan market? I think in the beginning, they may be focused on Oahu. Um, again, because we have a direct flight is coming from Japan. And also they have no extra um, COVID test or any efforts going to make the island. 
But again, uh, we really trying to do branding for the neighbor island, something unique that the, the, they don't have in Oahu or vice versa. So I think people have each island's image or idea to visit, but I think it's just a timing. But again, once timing is right, and then we're gonna push forward more on the island branding. But uh, Japanese are always looking for information for the new place. They love new things or limited items and whatnot. So I think those are the key words to promote. Perfect, perfect. And let's segue right into marketing. And um, I wanna ask actually this question for, uh, this question for Dave, oh, no, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I will. I will. Uh, uh, let's move straight into marketing because we have a little bit more questions that we have to do. I so uh, I'll start that this off. Okay. Here. We got sure. we got a quick question for Steve. I'm going to mute you if you're over 30 seconds. But tell us, about, <laughs> since we were talking about other islands and all, tell us about the Jash Travel Initiative and what you've been working on for uh, the island of Kauai and in enhancing Kauai's. Uh, recognition in the Japan market, briefly. Yes, as you know, uh, Kauai has one of the lowest COVID cases in, in our entire state. And uh, the mayor has been very, very stringent and very diligent on protecting the, his island. And they are very interested in reopening uh, their market to Japan. And I believe that perhaps, rather than taking an entire Hawaii approach, select an island like Kauai to be the the start of a Japan travel bubble where we can show the entire world and, and, and Japan how it's done. And, there's, we're, we're, and that will use the travel app that, that we have at, at uh, JASH, it's called Tokoka, that they can carry with them so we can follow them and they can use their own individual QR codes to check in and out of hotels, restaurants and that sort of thing. And then make sure that they follow and as you know, Japan travelers are pretty obedient compared to American travelers. You don't have to threaten them with imprisonment or fines to keep them on the path of a travel bubble. And therefore, I really think we should seriously think about Kauai as perhaps a launch of a wonderful uh, Japan travel bubble here in Hawaii. Well, thanks to you and Josh for all your efforts to try and find new ways to uh, communicate to the Japanese and new opportunities for our neighbor islands in particular Kauai. I have a question for Toby and then uh, we're, we're gonna get close to wrap it up here. Toby, what do you think is an effective way to market to the Japanese visitors at this stage? Oh, thank you for that question, Dave. I'm in marketing, yeah. I have one simple answer. Instagram, Instagram posts, Instagram stories, Instagram highlights, Instagram reels, Instagram live, work with Instagram influencers. I am the biggest fan of Instagram. Make sure you guys are on that, guys. Dave, I, I have a question for you. What do you think is an effective way to market to Japanese visitors? Well, well Toby, you went through the in Instagram thing so fast, <laughs> I barely got all of that, but I totally <laughs> agree on all your points and thoughts on Instagram. And we are encouraging our clients and partners to expand using Instagram in the Japanese language. I see two, two areas, the double Ds, digital and data, as keys to winning our customers back. You know, with the pandemic, our Hawaii prospective travelers have been focused on their digital devices. So using digital marketing through social channels, content sites, search engine marketing, video creation and distribution will really be a key to communicating to the traveler to consider visiting Hawaii again. As for data, you know, data is king. Those companies that have good clean data on their past guests, and we've talked a lot about repeat customers, now is the time to strategically use that data to encourage past guests and customers to return. Digital and data-driven marketing integrated into the overall marketing and sales efforts will win in this environment. Wow. We could talk, we talk about marketing all day, Good. but I know you've been waking up so early. Thank you for joining us. Please enjoy Japan, eat all the ramen and sushi while you're there. Maybe spring 2021, we can go back. <laughs> well, we all remain hopeful and I'm hoping residents from Hawaii can attend the Olympics here. I know we had a question about that. Remember tourism is two ways and we really need to uh, embrace bringing Japanese to Hawaii so that we can go back to Japan when it's appropriate uh, and the government is, uh, the regulations are allowing us to return. And hopefully that's spring and into the Olympic time period.
Awesome. I want to say to Sandy, Toby, our panelist viewers, Evan and our tech team, mahalo. Thank you very much. And when I do return to Hawaii, my next stop will be Zippies. For my oh, Vegas Zippies, day. yeah. Speaking of Zippies, it's time to return. Welcome, Sandy, back to close this. Thank you for all your questions. Konnichiwa, Sandy-san. Konnichiwa, Toby-san. Thank you so much. Hey, is that a, did you, were you eating a Zippies chili rice I, there? Yes, I was. I was. <laughs> yes. What? Makes me hungry. Oh, man, I'm hungry. Anyway, close this seminar. I'm going to get my one-time in for Zippies. And don't forget, <laughs> starting right now, soon. Yes, yeah, so let's just wrap this up. Mahalo to Dave and our speakers for joining us today. The questions and discussion were very helpful as we restart tourism from Japan. Tune into Governor Ige's press conference now. You will receive registration for our next webinar next week, Tuesday at 11.30 a.m., which evaluates the impacts and forecasts of the retail and shopping center industry. Thank you again to our panelists for sharing your guidance and providing us with hope as we move forward through this time together. See you next week. Aloha.